Thank you, Paula, and welcome everyone tonight. It's a tremendous pleasure to be here. I have, uh, whenever I'm introduced by Paula, I have to say uh, it's because of Paula Dobriansky that I am the chairman of the National Endowment for Democracy. Back in 2000, she spent a long time recruiting me to the, join the board of the NED. I thought uh, Bush is going to win in 2000. Paula will become the chairman of the board. I'll be happy to serve as a member. I did not know that she was going to go into the Bush administration and I would become the chairman of the board at my first meeting. I'm, tr I'm truly the example of the guy that was born on third base and thought he'd hit a triple. So thank you, Paula. It has been one of the most rewarding experiences of my life to have chaired the NED uh, for these last eight years. And welcome to all of you tonight. Uh, before we get into the program, um, one thing does occur to me, and that is that you can't be in Washington the, today or really in much of the country without thinking about the tragic news about the health conditions of Senator Kennedy that came to light over the weekend. And I just want to say Senator Kennedy has been a great friend of democracy and this organization, and our thoughts and prayers go out to him and his family at this time. Uh, the Board of Directors of the NED created the Democracy Service Medal to recognize individuals who have made significant contributions to the progress of democracy around the world. The bronze medallion reads, for service in the cause of democracy. The Democracy Service Medal was first awarded to the former Polish president and founder of the Solidarity Trade Union, Lech Wałęsa, and former AFL-CIO president, Lane Kirkland, a great friend of this organization in his lifetime. In April 1999, on the 10th anniversary of the Round Table Agreement that led to the peaceful transition to democracy in Poland. It has since been presented to a number of distinguished individuals whose names appear in your programs. All have demonstrated through their personal commitment, their dedication to the advancement of freedom, human rights, and democracy, often at risk to their very lives. No one exemplifies that kind of extraordinary commitment more than our awardee today. Max Kampelman has been a consistent, strong, and eloquent voice for freedom and democracy and he has more than matched that eloquence with a lifetime of public service. Indeed, whenever our country has needed him, Max has answered the call, whether to fight for civil rights for all Americans, to press for human rights for those unfortunate enough to live under oppressive regimes, or to help bring about a safer world. And he has done so in a truly bipartisan fashion. On a personal note, let me say that I have known this man for a long time, always considered him a friend, and a great inspiration, and we have a great deal in common. I remember seeing uh, Max at, after a tribute to the late Paul Nitza several years ago, and he was talking to our friend, the late Gene Kirkpatrick. There had been a lot of references to Hubert Humphrey and Ronald Reagan, and I went up to them and said to Gene and Max, is this the meeting of the Humphrey-Reagan caucus? And uh, they joked and talked about the fact that those two individuals were, of course, great, course, great inspirations in both of their lives. Well, it's a tremendous pleasure for me to say that for the last 14 years I've been a senior fellow at the Hubert Humphrey Institute at the University of Minnesota. Just found out from Max tonight that he actually negotiated the agreement for the late Hubert Humphrey that established the Humphrey Institute at the University of Minnesota. So we have a connection there in common. And, of course, as to the connection to Ronald Reagan, uh, many of you know I was elected to the Congress in 1980 carrying Ronald Reagan into office on my coattails. So, <laughs> so, uh, Max, is a, Max and I have been friends, and it's a tremendous personal pleasure uh, to be involved in this tonight. Let me take this opportunity to acknowledge the sponsors of our event, uh, the Robert H. Smith Family Town Foundation, the Robert P. and Arlene R. Kogood Family Foundation, the Hereford Foundation, whose president, Bob Miller, sits on the endowments board and is seated right in the front row there. Bob, good to see you tonight. Uh, we deeply appreciate... Uh, all these organizations for their generosity and their commitment to the spread of democracy. Let me say that at this time I'd like to read a message that we received uh, last week. Dear Max, congratulations on receiving the Democracy Service Medal from the National Endowment for Democracy. You have distinguished yourself as an exceptional public servant and you have led a career serving a cause greater than self. Your good work helps others realize the universal gift of liberty, promotes respect for human rights, and spreads the light of democracy to every corner of the world. Thank you for showing that moral clarity can help change the course of history. 
Laura and I send our best wishes. Sincerely, George W. Bush. I first met our next speaker uh, 25 years ago when I was a member of Congress and he was our ambassador to Honduras. His career in the Foreign Service has taken him to posts in Asia and Europe as well as Latin America and he has served with distinction as our permanent ambassador to the United Nations and as ambassador to Iraq. Prior to his current position he served as our country's first director of national intelligence on a personal note I may say I spoke to uh, Secretary Negroponte a few minutes ago and said I haven't seen him for several weeks, but I did see his daughter last weekend because his daughter and my daughter go to the same boarding school. So on a personal note, it's a great, to, it's great to welcome John Negroponte, whom I did first meet 25 years ago in Honduras, Secretary Negroponte. 